As we head into another new year, in this kind of awkward break between Christmas and New Year's, I thought it would be interesting to review my 2022 purchases and see what I could learn. How much did I buy? What did I buy? Why did I buy it? And did I make any mistakes? Let me tell you, it was shocking. You know I use Evernote for keeping track of my crafty supplies and tools. And if you don't know that, I'll put a link right here so you can see why I love it so much. So I put all my notes in date order, and then I made a spreadsheet with all the notes I created this year. I included the company name, the type of product, the name of the product, and a category so I could sort them in different ways and figure some things out. The first thing I figured out was that I bought way too much. I know this not only because of the number of lines in my spreadsheet, but also because as I went through, I saw how many of these new goodies that I just had to have, I haven't used yet. And that's good information for my 2023 planning. I've still got lots of new things to show you. But this leaves me with a question that I want to come back to. Why did I buy more than I used? It felt a bit weird to make a video without a card, especially with all these new unused goodies. So I grabbed a new stamp set, a new die, and a new layered stencil. And while I'm chit-chatting, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use the snowflake after Christmas. The second thing I noticed was that it looks like, at least for now, I'm kind of over stamping and coloring. My stamp purchases are less than 20% of my total, and only two of those were image sets, and only one of those can be colored. The majority of my stamp purchases were sentiments. In fact, you'll see, especially when we move to the dies section of the spreadsheet, okay, let's do that right now. I bought a lot of word dies this year, more than half the total number of my new dies. I've really been enjoying using dies to create my sentiments. Many of them can stand on their own on a card or be combined with other smaller dies or stamp sentiment add-ons. I think that part of the reason I shifted more to die cut sentiments comes from one of the big changes I made in my craft room this year, which is having my magnetic die storage right on the wall above my die cutting machine. All of my most used standalone dies are here. I'm loving this system and I'm still busy making extras every time I die cut and keeping the leftovers in this box filled with storage pockets. I made a whole video about this system and I'll link to that right here. So I had a real focus on sentiments this year, both stamped and die cut. The next thing I noticed is in the themes of what I bought. A lot of Christmas and a lot of what I call geometric. Christmas is self-explanatory, and because I make Christmas cards all year long, by the time the new Christmas stuff comes out in a particular year, I've already made most of my cards, and the new stuff gets used in the next year. And trust me, I am well prepared for next year. The geometric category is something that I'm really interested in lately. The idea that a cool pattern or background can be used for any occasion by just changing the colors and sentiments. This ended up being a number of embossing folders, cover plate dies, and stencils. Oh boy, I went a little nuts with the stencils this year. First, early in the year, I found a Colorful Life Designs. This is a small business in Texas that has hundreds of designs. And I, well, maybe because I'm figuring out that stencils are so versatile for so many techniques and fairly inexpensive, I pretty much bought everything I liked, like 40 of them. And then the next stencil fad. The layered stencils, oh my. They're more expensive because they include more than one stencil, but they make it so easy to create the most stunning, colorful patterns. And the Stencils 360. You know I love this tool with its spinning stencils, and Penguin Palace came out with some really good ones this year. I also looked at the companies I shopped from this year, and I see a bunch of familiar names. After a Colorful Life Designs, Catherine Pooler, Waffle Flower, Altenew, and Simon Says Stamp are the top ones. And I realized by shopping at favorites, I get high quality products that work well together. That's not to say I didn't try a couple of new companies or buy from other well-known companies. But when I find a company whose products work well with my style, I find myself going back to them again and again. Okay, so now I'm getting all excited again about all these new supplies and tools. And I can see how I ended up with this shocking number of new purchases. Like everyone else, I love new goodies and the possibilities of what I can make with them. But as I went through these purchases line by line, a couple of less exciting thoughts also came to me. First, a few times I bought something new that was very similar to something I already had. As the inventor of limes, my perfect system for getting the look without owning the exact products, that was a little embarrassing, and I plan to be a lot more thoughtful and careful about that in the future. More than a few times, I added extra items to my orders because I was already paying for shipping. 
Shipping to Canada is no joke, both in cost and time, and sometimes we have to pay taxes and handling fees at the door. So it makes sense to be very efficient by placing fewer but bigger orders. But I can clearly see that I ended up with some items that, well, I like them, sure, but they're not my absolute favorites, and I likely won't get the value from them. But I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. We all make mistakes, and these goodies can go to another crafter who will get use out of them, and that's all good. Really, as a percent, I've got way more goodies that I love, and I can't wait to use them. And I call that a success. All this analysis took me about an hour or two the other afternoon, and I do really feel like I learned something. I'm not going to promise not to buy anything this year, because that just feels a little fake to me, and I know my contrary personality well enough to know that it won't last. But I do feel like I have a better idea of where my pitfalls are, and hopefully that will help me avoid them. <laughs> Check back with me next year. On another note, I'm going to be live on Craft Roulette tonight. Craft Roulette is a live crafting show where we spin the wheel to decide on the four parameters of the project we'll be making. I hope you'll join us, ask some questions in the comment section, and maybe even play along and submit your project using the same parameters. I've put the YouTube link below. It starts at 7.30 Eastern. If you're watching after December 30th, it's recorded and you can use that same link to watch it. And now, Happy New Year! I wish you all the best in 2023. Thanks so much for all your support this year and for watching this video. See you next time.